Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the study of antiquity and the Middle Ages. As always, I'm your host, Nick Barksdale, and today we are joined once again by Dr. Aaron Mayer. Many of you are going to be familiar with his work on the Philistines and the interviews he's done on the channel. I am very excited to say that this next series is going to deal with a subject that many of you have requested, and that is ancient Israel and the Israelites. Dr. Aaron Mayer, thank you so much for coming on today. It's my pleasure, uh, like always. Another subject that I really enjoy, and that is religion and violence. And there's a, I mean, there's a lot of scholarship done. It's really fascinating, regardless of what culture, regardless of the people. And the Old Testament, in many ways, depicts a world of religious harmony that in many ways erupts into religious violence or military violence combined with religion. And I was wondering, how common was religious violence in ancient Israel, and how divided was Israel on the subject of religion, if we even know? While polling for questions, I got hit with a repeated theme, and I've seen it pop up for a while, and that was the supposed massacre of rival cities and peoples due to reasons of conflict and possibly a supernatural mission, per se. And what are your thoughts on that? Do you consider this to be a form of ethnic cleansing or genocide? Was this practice uncommon or was it normal? And I'd like to follow up before you answer and point out that, in my opinion, realistically, I feel like it was normal. I don't feel like it, if it occurred, I don't feel like it was abnormal. Anyone who's familiar with the Assyrian Empire and their art relating to the military knows that those guys knew how to wage a terrifying form of warfare. And so whenever I've heard people point out genocide in antiquity, I'm always really cautious with that because I'm like, we have our modern conception of genocide, and then you have ancient warfare, which if we were to go back and look at it today, it's going to look very similar to what we saw in the 20th century. But to them, it wasn't atrocity, and it was very normal. And if they didn't do it, someone would have done it to them. And so I'm, I, I'm not opposed to using the term genocide before the 20th century, but I'm very picky about what we use it for. Well, I think um, you have to remember that antiquity was a violent place. Um, and uh, although um, the effectivity of weapons uh, was not as it was today, but um, violence was there all the time. Um, and, you know, there are studies that, that talk about how that even though, even if you take into account the millions that were killed in the, in the last hundred years in world wars and all, et cetera, the, the world has become a less violent place over, over, the, over the centuries. And there's no question that violence was, was rife in any, any society. And, and if you could kill your enemy, you kill them. Uh, that's, it's, you know, bottom line. <laughs> uh, and I think a lot of that's depicted in the biblical text about religious related violence is either um, religious justification of things that occurred due to military conflict or um, um, ideological wishes that this is what will happen to my enemy, or I, I kill my enemy and I do a horrible thing, so I have to justify it, you know, with some uh, religious uh, uh, story. Um, but I think, I think, you know, you know, one of the things is that you know, if you rem remember when, um, just a few years ago, when ISIS started executing people uh, left and right, you know, in the most horrendous manners, and and to um, our modern perceptions of what's fair play and war and what do you do with prisoners, etc. It was so, you know, jarring, but they were just doing what people did 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 1,000 years ago. It just, you know, it wasn't, we didn't have television coverage of it then. Uh, and I think, I think a lot of the way we uh, try to understand the past is either, uh, on the one hand, Turn them into these perfect people who lived um, this perfect life. You know, they had these perfect ideals, etc. Or on the other hand, they were these horrible barbarians who did ethnic cleansing. They were um, people who were living very complex, difficult lives, and they had to fight for their for their survival. And and they fought tooth and nail, and sometimes in, in what we would consider very very uh, uh, atrocious manners. And that was life, you know. Just you know, the you know. I think I think in general, um, there's a there's this um, 
inclination to sort of see the past either as very rosy or very horrible. And it was a combination of, of all of it at the same time. So, you know, uh, you know, I know I, I made a comment about um, about the um, paleo diet in one of the pre previous things, and, and a lot of people got mad about that. Uh, uh, so I think I think that's part of it. You know, painting a, uh, this rosy picture, which is very often based on your ideology and interpreting the past, is is problematic. And, you know, there's this is great uh, poem and which was turned into a book. The past is a foreign country. They do things differently. Uh, and they did things very differently from the way we do it, and they understood it very differently, and trying to impose our understandings and our, and our ideologies on the past um, is, is exactly that, in imposing our uh, ideologies and understanding on the past. So, for example, looking at the biblical text, how the Israelites slaughtered the Canaanites when Joshua conquered the land, first of all, did that conquest even occur? Uh, if some of it occurred, what happened? And what is it saying that uh, that the Israelites want to ethnically cleanse their enemies? Perhaps it's a uh, it's a reaction to someone who did that to them. You know, who knows? But just to say simplistically, you know, and, and, and make your comparisons between the biblical text there and modern day uh, events today, it's, it's, it's mixing between things that shouldn't be mixed. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today at the study of antiquity and the Middle Ages. I hope you've enjoyed what we've done so far. This is actually just the first part of the series on ancient Israel. We've got more stuff coming, so stick with us. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to get into more. And Dr. Aaron Mayer, thank you so much for coming on today. My pleasure. Great to be here.